why do you think some engineers who use hardware will advise other engineers who use software and work in the box to not come out the box into analog equipment? Now, there's a few reasons for this. The obvious is that these people who do tell you not to come out the box, who use hardware, they don't want you to do so because they don't want you to have this kind of unique, let's call it a unique sound that they can achieve that you just cannot achieve in the box. We're all aware that analog sounds better, and it does, um, but there would be maybe a select few people, um, you know, who, who might advise you not to do that because they want to keep, a, let's say, a monopoly on the fact that analog is better, I'm getting a better sound than you kind of thing. So I do think there are people out there like that. Personally, myself, I'd love to see everyone come out the box because, you know, you are going to get a better sound and it's a lot more fun. It's expensive fun, don't get me wrong, but it is a better sound. Now, another reason would be that they know just how expensive it is. They know just how much it's going to cost you to come out the box. And they may not see the benefits of spending, let's say, £100,000 on analog mixing, analog mastering chains. You know, they may not see the there be a hundred thousand pound benefit there. Also as well is, it is good advice from someone who is experienced with analog equipment to say to someone, don't come out the box. If you're working, if you're a producer working on your own music, there's far less reason to come out the box because the added benefit that you're gonna get from coming out the box, it, it, it's relatively minimal in the grand scheme of how much it's going to cost to start coming out the box. So uh, there's, there's advice there from people who have experience working out the box and know just how much of a difference it makes to come out the box. And from a business perspective, it's, I would say, essential to be coming out the box to a mastering chain. If you're a mastering engineer, for instance, that is working 100% in the box, you can achieve the same sound that everyone else can achieve who's working in the box because everybody has access to these plugins. It's not like there's a secret set of plugins and way to use them that creates you this incredible master that nobody else is going to be able to achieve. Obviously, your ears come into play and your knowledge and your experience of actually working in the box, but the potential is there for anyone who, who, who can master a track in the box to get the same sound. The one thing we've come in out the box is that, you know, it, it does become everything is very unique. Everything in this chain is very unique. It creates a unique sound that is and will become your sound. Um, so yeah, I think that when when you ask me these sorts of questions, I think people are, are generally, I don't know, I don't feel like they're coming from a bad place. They're just maybe maybe more like, you know, I have experience in this field and from from a kind of a very small business or as a producer your the benefits of coming out the box uh, and the cost it's going to cost you aren't really worth it and when it comes to things like recall if you're a producer i would i would say stay in the box say 100% in the box even with synthesizers stay in the box you can you can create a great sound uh, of of, of a, a production in the box it's it's you know i don't see the point in using analog synths you can get a great sound using vsts um and instruments in the box and samples and things like that you can really create a great sound that way the the big thing here is when you're producing you know how it is you produce a song you you put it away you don't touch it for a month, you come back to it. If you're working with analog equipment, there's a recall aspect of it. It's it's a pain, it really is. If I was a producer myself, 
uh, I would stay 100% in the box, right? I would always stay in the box. And that is simply because of the recall aspect. And, you know, if you're using an analog synthesizer, you've got, to, you know, it's, it's great fun. Don't get me wrong. I used to have a massive Moog up on the wall and it was great fun. Uh, I think it had like 20 odd oscillators and uh, semi-modular patch bays. It was brilliant and it was great fun. Um, but that's all it was. It was great fun. The issue you had was was with with it is i could set this crazy um sound up yeah brilliant i've got that sound um you try and set that sound up for the session later two months down the line even if you took pictures of it it's, it's never back to how it was it never is and when it comes to to that sort of aspect of it is you need to be able to instantly recall that session um especially with production so yeah um i don't i don't see it coming from when when someone's asked you this i don't see it coming from a bad place too much maybe some people will come from a bad place where they want to kind of keep this sort of uh, monopoly on our uh, analogs better so if as, as if i keep as many people away from analog they'll they'll need to come to me kind of thing um i don't personally think like that I would, that's why I do so many videos on analog equipment and saying how good it is uh, and comparing it to the digital because I think coming out the box and, and working with real analog equipment is, is really good fun. Very expensive fun, don't get me wrong, but if, if you've got deep pockets and you want to come out the box, it's, it's definitely a beneficial thing to do.